Good morning, and welcome to the Judge Advocate General Change of Office and Retirement Ceremony in honor of Vice Admiral Del Crandall. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, our national anthem, and the invocation. Bozen, post the side boys. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. <laughs> Judge Advocate General, arriving. Naval operations arriving. <laughs> Navy arriving. Present arms. Advance the colors.
MU1 Daniel Curran will now sing the national anthem. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Hold, soldier, arm. Retire the colors. Bozen, retire the side boys. Father Kellogg will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, you moved over the surface of the waters when you lovingly created our world. We pause this morning to ask your blessing on this distinguished ceremony honoring the lifelong service, leadership, and accomplishments of a distinguished sailor, Vice Admiral Del Crandall, Judge Advocate General of the United States Navy. As a young man, Vice Admiral Crandall recognized that service in the Navy is more than a job. You sent him forth from the Naval Reserve Officers Training Corps program at Northwestern University, class of 1984, to proudly wear the cloth of this nation for 40 years. Here, our gratitude for Vice Admiral Crandall's willingness to endure his first tour of duty on the USS Lockwood to his numerous stations around the world, times of separation from loved ones, professional demands, and personal challenges. As we pause at the threshold of this new adventure, we pray that Vice Admiral Crandall is duly applauded for the personal investment that he and his family have made in the lives of countless sailors. His legacy will last far longer than the years he gave of himself so selflessly. Both our United States Navy and our country are stronger because of his service as the 45th Judge Advocate General. Vice Admiral Crandall's wisdom, humor, and unselfishness have not only shown us an example of integrity, but also genuine humility. We also pause this morning to express our gratitude for the sacrifices and the dedication made by the Crandall family. Vice Admiral Crandall's wife, Barb, his sons, William, Andrew, and Edward, and his parents, Darce and Ruthann. Those of us gathered here are better people because of the compassion, devotion, and friendship that each of you have shared with us. 
As Vice Admiral Crandall and his family step into a new journey, we ask you to strengthen them for this next chapter in their life, a retirement well-deserved. Amidst all of the awards and accolades of this ceremony, the celebratory backpats and heartfelt handshakes, we pray that Vice Admiral Crandall will feel in his heart your pride in him and that he will also hear you say well done for his faithful service to our country. It is in the strength of your name that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The retirement ceremony that you will witness today is not specifically prescribed by U.S. Navy regulations, but is rather an honored product of a rich heritage of our naval traditions. Custom has established that this ceremony be impressive and dedicated to strengthening the respect for service that is vital to any military organization. We are honored today to have Vice Admiral Crandall's family and Vice Admiral French's family in attendance. We would also like to extend a welcome to all other distinguished visitors, family, friends, and colleagues who have come here to celebrate today. Thank you for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce Vice Admiral Crandall, Judge Advocate General of the Navy, who will introduce today's presiding officer. Thank you, Captain Klein. Good morning and welcome on this beautiful day. I'm grateful to Secretary Del Toro for being our presiding officer today and to our CNO, Admiral Lisa Franchetti, for being our guest speaker. Before I introduce the Secretary, I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize a few of the many distinguished guests who are here. Joining us today are former Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Retired Dunford, our 32nd CNO, Admiral Retired Gil Day, our 31st CNO, Admiral Retired Richardson, the Honorable Ms. Crass, the Honorable Judge Lauer, the Honorable Chief Judge Olson, the Honorable Judge Johnson, the Honorable Judge Mags, the Honorable Mr. Coffey, the Honorable Mr. Bashar, the Honorable Mr. Preston, Deputy Counsel Dr. Geltzer, and Mr. Jim Sievert and the many other general and flag officers and members of the Senior Executive Service active and retired, as well as family, friends, and the many colleagues enduring, standing in the back. Thank you for coming and welcome today. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro is the 78th Secretary of the Navy. He's responsible for over one million sailors, Marines, reservists, and civilian personnel and an annual budget exceeding $255 billion. He was born in Havana, Cuba, and immigrated to the U.S. as a child, eventually graduating from the U.S. Naval Academy. He was a surface warfare officer. That's going to be a theme today. The first commanding officer of USS Bulkley and retired after 22 years of active service. He then founded SG, SBG Technology Solutions Incorporated and served as president and CAO for 17 years before being sworn in as the secretary on 9 August 2021, just nine days before I became the Judge Advocate General of the Navy. His three priorities for the department are strengthening maritime dominance, enhancing strategic partnerships, and building a culture of warfighting excellence, which specifically includes taking care of people. I've had the distinct pleasure of working closely with Secretary Del Toro for three years now. I admire the focus and passion with which he leads our Navy and takes care of our people, although that can make him a challenging client at times. <laughs> One quick personal story. Two years ago, Barb fell and broke her hip and had to have emergency hip replacement surgery. Shortly after Barb returned from surgery and was resting comfortably in her hospital room, my cell phone rings and it's the secretary. He'd heard about Barb and was calling to ensure she was okay and to ask if there was anything he or his wife Betty could do to help. 
That's a leader who lives his priorities. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, and my thanks to Betty, too. I appreciate your leadership and your mentorship. It's a privilege to have you presiding today. Admiral, I was a little fearful you were going to tell the story about a year and a half ago. We took a tour of uh, the JAG um, facilities down in Norfolk, Virginia, and I walked into the courthouse, and uh, everybody was prepared to you know, pay me honors and say all the nice things. And I looked around, and I said, Admiral, this place looks like a shithouse. <laughs> we have to fix this. And I am proud to say that we have money now in the palm to actually rebuild the damn courthouse. I had the privilege, before I get into my speech, and I do hope I make it through my speech, but um, a couple of weeks ago, I had the privilege of actually going down um, up to Newport, Rhode Island, to address all the, the JAG students, the incoming lawyers, and to our Navy. And it was really a, just a simply amazing experience. And uh, as I headed up there, I asked my, uh, my two personal lawyers if they could uh, find for me some appropriate jokes that I could use, given that I was going to be surrounded by lawyers. I thought I'd share some of those with you here this morning, but with the mention of so many judges and lawyers in the crowd, I'm a little bit intimidated. But perhaps I'll share one, the second one that I used, which I think is appropriate for Admiral Crandall as he ventures off from his naval career into his future private sector career. And uh, the joke goes as this. There's a lawyer who passes away, and he's met at the pearly gates by St. Peter. And St. Peter says to him, I want to congratulate you on, a, on, a, on a, a life just really full of tremendous accomplishments and everything. I mean, your 86 years of life has really proven a testimony to your profession. And the uh, lawyer says inquisitively to, to St. Peter, says, uh, St. Peter, I, th I think your, your, your facts may be wrong. I'm, I'm only 56. And St. Peter says, well, I'm sorry, but we reviewed your timesheets, and it must be 86. <laughs> so, needless to say, let that be your first lesson, Admiral. Don't cheat on your timesheets, okay? Be kind to others. Good morning. It is an honor, indeed, to be here today, this morning, to celebrate the service of Vice Admiral Crandall and to welcome Vice Admiral French, as he assumes the role of Judge Advocate General of the Navy in command of the Office of the Judge Advocate General. And first and foremost, I want to thank Vice Admiral Crandall's family and friends, as I did earlier, uh, for your love and your support of Admiral Crandall throughout his entire life to get him to where he is today and to get Barb where she is today. We cannot thank you enough for your love and the sacrifices that you all have made throughout his distinguished career. Thank you. You have been a valued member of our Navy family since your husband's time in ROTC over 40 years ago, Barb. And we just simply cannot thank you enough. How about a hand of applause, please? And, and your selfless volunteer work with the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society and the Navy Officers Spouses Club, along with organizations outside of the Navy, such as the annual Alzheimer's Walk for Life and Christ Church Washington Parish for Calvary Women's Services as well. All this while working part-time as the office manager and paralegal at a law firm in Burke, Virginia. While we are celebrating your husband's achievements today, we are also celebrating yours. And again, we wish you the very best in retirement. It's my understanding he's making up for a lot of lost time and taking you to Hawaii for about four months, which is truly spectacular. Well done, Admiral. At some point, he's going to have to find a new job. And my wife volunteered to go to Hawaii and be with you during the fourth month while he seeks employment elsewhere, OK? <laughs> to Mrs. Uh, Doris Crandall and Mrs. Ruth Ann Crandall, thank you for raising an incredible son who dedicated his career and did his life in service of our great nation. Kathy and Amy, it is wonderful to have you here in celebration of your nephew and brother. And to Admiral Crandall's sons, William, Andrew, and Edward, Thank you for your support throughout your father's distinguished career. It was really wonderful getting to know you earlier today. 
very pleased that your mom didn't dress you up in the same suits and ties and shirts and things like that. But uh, your parents are very, very proud of what you've accomplished in life. And uh, we wish you all the very best. And I want to thank Admiral French's family for being here today as well, too. To my several French's children, Lieutenant Katie French, who serves in Bahrain, and First Lieutenant Andy French as well, too, who serves in a slightly different service, I think, the United States Army. And I did offer him an opportunity to do a lateral transfer at any time during his career if he cho so chooses to do so. But I thank you, not only for your unwavering support of your father throughout his career, but also for your own service to the United States Navy and the United States Army, respectively. As we all know, families truly are the backbone of our armed forces, and I was blessed to have the support of my wife, Betty, and our sons throughout my career in the Navy and even today. I welcome and thank our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Frank Ketty, for her leadership of our United States Navy. Thank you, Admiral, for everything you're doing for our United States Navy and Marine Corps as well, too. General Dunford, General Milley, thank you for your guidance for our servicemen and women around the world throughout your tenures. Now, it's fair to say, General, that uh, one thing that we now share in common, uh, yourself, General Milley, and myself, is he's managed to keep all three of us out of jail, right? And that's a good thing. And Admiral Gilday, thank you, sir, and uh, Linda for being here today and for your spectacular leadership of our Navy as well, too. Deputy Assistant to the President Giltzer, I thank you for your presence today and for your important work at the National Security Council. And to General Counsel Krauss, former General Counsel Preston, General Counsel Coffey, and General Counsel Besher, for your service within the Department of Defense, for our service members, and for the civilians who support them. And I'm particularly pleased by the relationship that we have between our JAGs and our General Counsels in the Department of the Navy and the Department of Defense. It's special, it's necessary, and it's so essential to our, our national security. Thank you. And welcome again to Chief Justice Olson, Senior Judge Efren, and Judge Maggs. Thank you for your presence today and your work at the United States Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces, which is such an important court to the work that we do and to our veterans. And to all our general officers, flag officers, senior enlisted leaders, distinguished visitors, guests, family, and friends, welcome and thanks for joining us. I am humbled and I am honored to be part of this momentous occasion today, the changing of command from one accomplished officer to another and to celebrate the service of Vice Admiral Crandall. Our Navy JAG Corps is essential to ensuring our sailors are ready to fulfill their combat missions throughout the globe. And this is vital because as you have seen and read in the news, we face tremendous uncertainty in the world that we live today. For the first time since World War II, we face a comprehensive maritime power. Our pacing challenge in the Indo-Pacific, the People's Republic of China continues to exert its excessive maritime claims through their Navy, Coast Guard, and military militia as well. In Europe, Russia is well into its third year now of its full-scale and illegal invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine is fighting not just for their own liberty and freedom, they are fighting to protect democracy in Europe and indeed around the world. In the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, we are working alongside our NATO allies and Middle East partners to ensure the safety of innocent civilian mariners and protecting our commercial shipping against Iranian-aligned Houthi attacks. And immediately following Hamas's brutal attack against the people of Israel on October 7th, our sailors and Marines were on station, the ready integrated force that the world needed. Our Navy and Marine Corps team is at the forefront of defending and preserving global stability. And we remain committed to ensuring freedom of navigation in the world's seas and oceans. Our mission would be impossible, impossible, without the essential work of our Navy JAG Corps. And Vice Admiral Crandall's leadership of the 2,300 attorneys, enlisted legal men, and civilian employees of the Navy JAG Corps community was integral to its many successes these past three years. Throughout his time as Judge Advocate General of the Navy, Vice Admiral Crandall provided tailored legal advice for high-profile cases and the most sensitive matters affecting the Department of the Navy. And I think I remember each and every one of our engagements, Admiral. None of them were easy, all of them were necessary, and I thank you for the tremendous legal counsel that you provided me and the CNO throughout all of these. Under his supervision, the JAG Corps teams adeptly operated a full federal court martial system with counsel and judges executing military justice matters from investigation to final appeal. He implemented a total overhaul of the Navy's legal technology, modernizing the Navy's case management and tracking systems, and implementing deliberate, repeatable processes to ensure that these systems continue to be in use far into the future. 
While accomplishing all of this, he also led the Navy's implementation of congressional and DOD reforms, including establishing and reaching full operational capability for the Office of Special Trial Counsel, which is so critically important to protecting our sailors and our Marines and all our service members throughout the department. This worldwide military justice organization prosecutes, I quote, covered offenses, violations of certain punitive articles of the UCMJ, and overall increases readiness of our fleet and our force. Throughout his tenure, the JAG Corps has grown significantly, adjusting to unprecedented demands and cases. And throughout this growth and extraordinary change, Vice Admiral Crandall has never forgotten about the sailors and civilians of the JAG Corps himself, because he truly cares about people. He, in fact, committed to and prioritized strengthening the cooperation between the Department of the Navy's uniformed and civilian lawyers and graciously welcomed my general counsel aboard in early 2022 as well, too, and we've made a hell of a team. Vice Admiral Crandall, I could create a long laundry list of your accomplishments over the past three years as Judge Advocate General, but we would be here all day today, and all of us want to get to the reception. And although I know you may be eager to begin charging by the hour, as I said earlier, I'm afraid you're going to have to take these remarks pro bono. <laughs> so, the tremendous work that you've accomplished during your tenure as Principal Military Legal Counsel to both myself and the CNO simply cannot be overstated. Thank you for your tireless pursuit of justice and protection of the law. Because of your efforts, experience, and vision, you leave truly a lasting legacy for others to follow. I thank you all once again for this opportunity to speak. Vice Admiral Crandall, thank you for your four decades of honorable and faithful service to the United States Navy and this great nation. It's my sincere hope that you and Barb enjoy a wonderful and fulfilling retirement. Now, Vice Admiral French, who isn't smiling as much as Admiral Crandall is. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Congratulations, Admiral. I wish you the best of luck, and to your partner, Stacy, as well, too, uh, as you assume these incredibly important responsibilities. And I look forward also from benefiting from your sound counsel. Now, if you're wondering how one becomes the Judge Advocate General of the United States Navy, there are obviously many characteristics that I look for and many things that have to be in place in order to become a JAG. But I will tell you that on the weekend that I was confirmed Secretary of the Navy, on that Sunday, I was confirmed on Saturday, and that Sunday I took my uh, then one-year-old granddaughter for a walk around my uh, circle in my neighborhood, and along comes jogging this young, tall, handsome, you know, man towards me and stops out of nowhere, and I didn't know who he was, he was I didn't think he was one of my neighbors, and he congratulates me. He was stalking me, for God's sakes. And I thought to myself, wow, what a coincidence. Uh, the number two guy in the uh, JAG Corps is running around my neighborhood on the day after I got confirmed. <laughs> now, you know, I tell all my, and some of you have heard me tell this story before, I tell all my generals and admirals that I, you know, I expect them to know how to fight because that's what they've been trained to do uh, throughout their entire lives. But I really, really demand that they all think strategically. And I'm quite confident that as Admiral French now launches into his JAG career, he's a strategic thinker. <laughs> So, well done, Admiral. Well done. So, uh, you should have no trouble tracking me down if there's anything you need, obviously. And I certainly look forward to hearing about the continued success of our Navy and JAG and Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, may God bless all of you. May God bless our sailors, Marines, civilians, and their families with fair winds and following seas always. Thank you. Vice Admiral Crandall will now join Secretary Del Toro for the presentation of his award. Yes, attention to award. The President of the United States pl takes pleasure in presenting the Distinguished Service Medal Gold Star in lieu of second award to Vice Admiral Darce E. Crandall, Jr., Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy, for services set forth in the following citation. For exceptionally meritorious service to the United States in a duty of great responsibility from August 2021 to September 2024 as the 45th Judge Advocate General of the Navy. Vice Admiral Crandall provided the Secretary of the Navy and the Chief of Naval Operations Sage Council concerning the most complex, important, and challenging legal matters. He reformed the military justice system to enable the Navy to meet emerging requirements while maintaining fair administration of justice. 
He also made significant improvements to the structure and strategy of the JAG Corps, such as establishing both an independent commander of Naval Legal Service Command and an office of the Special Trial Council, creating an assistant Judge Advocate General for training, education, and professional development, and revising recruiting and accessions programs. Vice Admiral Crandall's superb performance of duties culminated his 40 years of honorable and dedicated military service. By his distinguished accomplishments, exemplary leadership, and deep devotion to duty, Vice Admiral Crandall reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Crandall will now introduce our guest speaker. Admiral Lisa Franchetti is the 33rd Chief of Naval Operations and a native of Rochester, New York. I am extremely proud to call her CNO. She is the first woman to be the CNO, and she is the first CNO to receive a commission through the Navy's Reserve Officer Training Corps Program, or ROTC. Maybe more noteworthy today is that we both graduated from the ROTC program at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. Home of the Wildcats, or unfortunately the Cardiac Cats, if you know anything about our football team. We've known one another since 1981. She was the class of 1985, and I was one year ahead of her in the class of 1984. Yes, she's got one more star than I have. Although I've been around one year longer, I guess I should have stepped up my game a little sooner. Admiral Frank Hetty is also a surface warfare officer who is commanded at sea at every level. A guided missile destroyer, a destroyer squadron, two different carrier strike groups, and the US Sixth Fleet. She's also served as commander of U.S. Navy, Naval Forces Korea, as the director of strategy, plans, and policy on the joint staff, and as the vice chief of naval operations. I'm honored to have a fellow Wildcat at the helm of America's warfighting Navy. Thank you, CNO, for serving as my guest speaker today. Well, thank you, Dell, for that warm introduction. And I have to say, you know, when we were at Northwestern, going back to the, uh, the cardiac uh, cats, uh, we were there for Stop State at 28. When Northwestern played Michigan State to have the winning, I guess winning, record or losing record of the most losses in college football in history <laughs> during, our, during our tenure there. And uh, we were also there when we won a game. And uh, we succeeded that to another thing, and uh, we threw a lot of goalposts into Lake Michigan. So thank you very much for uh, reminding me of our, uh, of our storied history in football there at Northwestern. You haven't played Navy, have <laughs> Oh, we have. So Secretary Del Toro, General Dunford, Admiral Richardson, and Dana, Admiral Gilday, and Linda, judges of the General Counsel, judges on the Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces, Honorable Garcia, Flag and General Officers, JAG Corps, officers, enlisted, civilians, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta say fellow Wildcats. I think there's a lot of Wildcats out there. But most importantly, family and friends of Admiral Crandall and Admiral French, it is really an honor to be here with you today and thank you so much for the opportunity. Today is a great Navy day. And in a few moments, as the Secretary said, we will get to bear witness to a time-honored tradition where we transfer the responsibility of command, in this case, the Office of the Judge Advocate General, from one officer to the next. It is a significant event for the JAG Corps, for our Navy, for the Joint Force, and especially for Dell and Chris and their families. It's also a bittersweet day as we bid farewell and following seas to a friend and shipmate, to Dell and his family, as they set sail on the next leg of their journey. So let me start this morning by just saying thank you to the Navy Band, 
and to the ceremonial honor guard for adding so much to our celebration today. Please join me in giving them a big round of applause. And let me continue in that same vein by saying thank you to the men and women of the JAG Corps assembled here today and those you represent, and to your families, your friends, and your broader support networks. I am so proud of this team, this team of warfighters, made up of over 2,300 attorneys, enlisted, legal men, and civilian employees. And although the work of this community can sometimes pass by unnoticed, its impact truly runs deep. What you do every single day makes a difference, affecting national security and directly contributing to the welfare of the fleet, its warfighters, and their families. So whether you're serving at sea, whether you're serving ashore, you are foundational to generating naval power. And you have done that as part of amazing teams, led by amazing leaders like Del Crandall and Chris French. So how about a big round of applause for our JAG Corps all over the world and everything they do for us every day. So Del, I'm gonna start with you this morning, our Navy's top JAG, our 45th Judge Advocate General. Dell, as you mentioned, we've known each other for a really long time when we were back at Northwestern in the same NROTC unit. And I promise I'm only going to do this one time, but they always do it at the Naval Academy for every class that graduated. So how about, go Wildcats! Woo! All right, we got some cats out there. Dell was a year ahead of me, as he said. And I still remember coming back from summer break to learn one year that Dell had earned his enlisted dolphins on the USS Woodrow Wilson as a midshipman. How cool is that? There is no doubt that Dell challenged himself and others before he even hit the fleet, something he would continue to do throughout his career. And although we shared those formative years together, our paths would cross many times over his 40 years of service as junior officers, senior officers, and admirals, and even recently, mostly in the Pentagon. Dell, it has been incredible to watch your journey from the surface warfare community to the judge advocate general communities to finally becoming our JAG. I have to say it is a great day for Northwestern and their NROTC program. Two of us on the stage being grads, plus a lot of other alumni in the audience and an entire family of Crandalls that are alumni from Northwestern. So again, really proud of that program and what it's been able to produce. But second, and more importantly, Dell, it has been an absolute privilege observing you, learning from you, and calling you a friend all of these years. Few people here can eclipse your love for your family, our sailors and civilians, the Navy, the Joint Force, and our nation, and it has been an honor to serve alongside of you. But I know that you did not do this alone. So before I continue, I'd like to take a moment to recognize your family. First, your wife, Barb and your three sons, William, Andrew, and Edward, of course, all Wildcats. As I know, they have been your source of strength. They have been the true foundation of your career, your service, and everything that you have been able to do. They are the ones that made it all possible. Barb, I think this ceremony is just as much for you as it is for Dell, because you've also been serving our nation for 40 years. Dell and Barb started dating way back at Northwestern when Dell was in the Rossi unit with me, and I can definitely remember seeing you cheering them on when we were over there at many games and over there on Ryan Field. It's your support for Dell, for your family, and our Navy that I've been able to watch, and it hasn't wavered all over these many years. In a few minutes, we're going to recognize, Del, uh, recognize Barb for all the things that she's done. And I want to just add one more thing to the list that we're going to talk about, and one that's particularly special to me. Barb is part of the Navy Arlington Volunteers. It's a select group of people who act as my representative for all our funerals at Arlington Cemetery. It takes a special person to be able to do that. It demonstrates the type of wife, mother, and person that you are, kind, respectful, 
and always looking out for and caring for others. That is the Crandall family trademark. Like Dell, you always put others before yourself. And I thank you for that. I thank you for your service over all of these years. Can we please give Barb a big round of applause? I also want to personally thank the Crandall boys, William, Andrew, and Edward, who I know carry on their parents' sense of humor for all they have done in support of our country. I know it's not easy being Navy kids. We just talked about that a minute ago. Moving around, changing schools, making new friends, new sports teams every couple of years. But it does make you stronger and more resilient. And I know that you are your parents' biggest joy and their biggest inspiration. So thank you for your own service and your sacrifice. How about applause for the Crandall kids? And it always does take a village with these long and challenging careers. So Dell's dad, Dars, your mom, Ruth Ann, also Northwestern grad, sister Amy, also Northwestern grad, Barb's sister, Nancy, brother Richard, thank you for providing, for providing them such a strong foundation to stand on for all these years. Thank you for your love and support. I know they could not have done it without you. So how about one more round of applause for the Crandall family. Now, back to you, Dell. Everyone gathered here knows well your legal prowess, your love for books, your mastery of the dictionary, but what they may not know is that you have never shied away from a challenge. First, becoming a SWO and getting your pin, then heading to law school, and then becoming a JAG, and then pursuing the very hardest jobs that our legal community has to offer. You just told me that one of your most favorite tours was your legal department head tour on the USS Independence. Sitting there as a HOD, as a lieutenant commander, and really being there in the thick of things every day. And then your next favorite thing was being in command, and that is what you got to do. Heading to be the commanding officer of Naval Legal Services Office in Pensacola, you got to serve as a legal advisor on the National Security Council staff. You are the legal counsel to General Dunford here today, and he is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. You served as the Deputy Judge Advocate General, and you were also dual-hatted at that time as the Commander, again, of Legal Services Command, and then most recently serving here as our Navy's Judge Advocate General. You have reached the absolute pinnacle in our Navy and our joint force, advising our nation's most senior decision makers on some of the most complex national security issues of our time, and leading from the very top of your profession. You have had a front row seat to history. You have always remained laser focused on our fleet and our warfighters, and you have truly made a difference every single step of the way. And nowhere is that more evident than in your last two tours. Dell, your leadership was pivotal over these last six years. As the Secretary said, supporting the establishment of the Office of Special Trial Counsel, increasing our JAG Corps manning, and aligning the JAG Corps to your priorities of warfighting, people, and military justice. But most importantly, you have really connected the JAG Corps to the fleet, and you have unified our JAG Corps behind your community's mission statement to provide legal services to our Navy and joint warfighters in support of America's national security. And in a profession where you could easily earn 10 times the amount outside of the Navy, you stayed. And you stayed because of your passion, your dedication to serving something greater than yourself, and your dedication to the JAG Corps, our Navy, and to our nation. Dell, I can definitely confirm that what I saw at Northwestern so many years ago is true. Your name will be etched in Naval history as a leader of consequence, always ready to lead, inspire, mentor, and drive your teammates including me, to bring their best every day. The JAG Corps is in a much better position today thanks to your steadfast leadership and tireless support. Thank you for your lifetime of service and sacrifice to our nation. Let's give Dell a big round of applause.
And that takes me to Chris French, another exceptional leader and warfighter. Chris, I know that you are ready to step right in and become our 46th Judge Advocate General and really accelerate the work that you and Dell have done over these last three years. Your 34 years of Naval service have also included some of the most challenging positions in the community, and you too have had a similar front row seat to history. Those who have had the opportunity and the pleasure of serving with you always highlight your strong work ethic, your passion, and your selfless dedication to the mission and to the team. Having served with you myself, I know that you bring the exact type of professional experience, expertise, steady hand, even keel, and energy needed for the immense responsibility of leading this community and advising our Navy's most senior leaders. I'd also like to welcome and recognize the service of Chris's family. Those who are here today and those who are watching from afar, we've got here today his daughter, Caitlin, Navy Lieutenant, serving over there in Bahrain. Thank you so much for getting all the way over here. And your son, Andrew, First Lieutenant in the Army, Corps of Engineers, a recent graduate of Sapper School and just returning back from Poland. Great to have you here. Your mom, Nancy, your dad, Peter, your partner, Stacy, and her family, and your siblings, Andrew and Debbie. Thank you so much to all of you for your continued support of your father, son, brother, and partner as he moves on into this new role. I know that you inspire him to bring his best every single day. Chris, you have my full trust and confidence as you take on this new mission, and Secretary Del Toro and I are incredibly proud to have you take the helm of this organization that is so critical to enabling and delivering naval power anywhere in the world, anytime. I know this team is in good hands. So as a wrap up today, let me say bravo Zulu to Dell and Barb for a job in an amazing career, incredibly well done. You will be missed. We all look forward to staying in touch and we wish you fair winds and following seas as you set sail on the next leg of your journey. We cannot wait to see where it takes you. And we know Hawaii is your first stop with a set of one-way tickets. Who knows what is gonna happen next. I'd also again like to offer my congratulations to Chris, our Navy's newest Vice Admiral. As you well know, the challenges we face are only accelerating and I'm confident that you and your team will move out boldly with urgency and a strong sense of purpose to ensure that America's warfighting Navy is ready to fight and win at sea today and in the future. Again, it's my honor to be here and be part of this ceremony today. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring up Admiral Crandall. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Ready to go. All right, here we go. Thank you very much, everybody. Attention to certificate of retirement. <laughs> certificate of retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents greetings, this is to certify that Vice Admiral Darce E. Crandall Jr., having served faithfully and honorably, will be retired from the United States Navy on the first day of November 2024. Signed, Lisa Franchetti, Admiral, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations. Admiral Franchetti will also recognize Mrs. Crandall's tremendous contributions to the Department of the Navy and to the United States. Mrs. Crandall, please join us on stage. Attention to award. The Chief of Naval Operations takes pleasure in presenting the Superior Public Service Award to Mrs. Barbara Crandall for services set forth in the following citation. For distinguished public service in support of the United States Navy, the Department of Defense, and the nation from August 2019 to August 2024. 
Mrs. Crandall served as a superb advocate for sailors, Marines, civilians, and their families, significantly improving the quality of life for thousands serving across the globe. Her unwavering, unwavering devotion to Navy families was evident in her tireless volunteer work with the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, the Navy Officer Spouses Club, and as a Navy Arlington volunteer. Her selfless leadership greatly influenced the next generation of Naval Officer Spouses, fostering their embrace of Navy culture. By her dedication to the Navy, Mrs. Crandall actively contributed to her community by serving as a committee lead for Calvary Women's Services, supporting women in need, and organizing teams for five Alzheimer Walk for Life, raising more than $18,000 for their research. Throughout her service, Mrs. Crandall selflessly dedicated her time, energy, and skills to advise, counsel, and serve others. By her superior leadership, wise judgment, and deep devotion to duty, Ms. Barbara Crandall reflected great credit upon herself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Navy Service. Signed, 26 August 2024, L.M. Franchetti, Admiral, United States Navy. Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Del Crandall, the 45th Judge Advocate General of the Navy. All right. All right, once again, good morning. Thanks for being here at the historic Washington Navy Yard. Much to the chagrin. here and he told me nobody ever does that and I said well I'm the judge advocate general I think we're gonna do it and the whole purpose is because the building to your left is building 58 on historic Navy Yard it's filled with judge advocates legal men and Navy professionals in our JAG Corps and it's the home of the Navy Marine Corps Court of Criminal Appeals so I thought it only fitting today that as you sit here and watch this ceremony, you're also able to take in the court, and uh, it really stands for the now 2,700 members of our JAG Corps around the globe. So, uh, Brian, thanks for putting up with my, uh, my wish today. Mr. Secretary, thank you for your kind words and for presiding today. I know how demanding your schedule is. I also want to thank you for the award. It's humbling because everything I've accomplished as a Judge Advocate General is due to the efforts of countless men and women across our JAG Corps. CNO, thank you for your mentorship and friendship over these many years and taking the time to speak today. It's truly special to have a shipmate like you, a fellow Wildcat midshipman, leading our Navy. We're in great hands. Thank you as well to Father Kellogg for agreeing to participate in today's ceremony. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Welcome to the many distinguished guests, colleagues, family and friends joining us. You honor me and you honor my family with your presence. I know that we've previously welcomed many, but there's just a few others I wanna mention. Major General Dave Bly, the Staff Judge Advocate to the Commandant, and Rear Admiral Rick Batson, the Judge Advocate General of the Coast Guard. Three pre previous Navy JAGs, Vice Admiral Retired John Hannock, Vice Admiral Retired Nan Dorenzi, and Rear Admiral Retired Jim McPherson. Two previous SJAs to the Commandant, Major General Retired Dan Lecce, and Major General Retired John Ewers. And two retired flag officers and friends who've traveled a long distance to be here, Vice Admiral Retired Forrest Faison and his wife Michelle, and Vice Admiral Retired Yancey Lindsay and his wife, Stacy. I'd also like to call out several groups of friends who are here. Members of Northwestern University's ROTC unit who commissioned with me in June of 1984. Other Northwestern alumni, including my good friends from Willard Residential College. I know that sounds fancy, but really all it was was the dorm with the best parties on campus. Go Cats. And even some friends from high school in St. Charles, Illinois, and one of my friends from Georgetown Law. To our Capitol Hill neighbors from Christ Church, Washington Parish. 
And then there are those from my days on USS Independence and a sizable group from my first ship, the USS Lockwood, both of which were home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. It's hard to believe that our mission on the Lockwood during the Cold War in the 1980s was searching for and tracking Soviet submarines. We grow, grew really close during those years, far from home and long before the internet and FaceTime. It's truly special to have so many of you here. And many others from across my career and every duty station where Barb, the boys, and I have been. And of course, no milestone event in life would be the same without the support of family. And mine is here in force. My wife of 38 plus years, Barb, our three sons, William, Andrew, and Edward. Yeah, we have a little thing going for the royal family. <laughs> my parents, Darce and Ruthann Crandall. My sister, Amy, and two of her children, Claire and Frank, are here. My sister-in-law, Nancy Dallet, her husband, Tom, and daughter, Abby Reedy. My brother-in-law, Rich Puckett, and his daughter, Amanda. Aunt Kathy, my dad's sister, and two of my cousins, Heather Hassel and her husband, Brian, and Jill Rosenberg, her husband, Abel, and their son, Aaron. I think Jill is extremely proud because she believes she's met every single one of my aides over the years. It's hard for me to express how much it means to have so many people joining us here this morning, helping celebrate 40 years, the 40 years I've been privileged to serve this nation and our Navy. Thank you all. Before a few formal comments, I want to take a moment to thank the many people who've made to today's event possible. First of all, MU1 Musician First Class Daniel Curran. What an incredibly inspiring rendition of our national anthem. Round of applause for MU1 Curran. There's a backstory here. I first heard MU1 Curran sing last February at Recruit Training Command, the quarterdeck of the U.S. Navy in Great Lakes, Illinois, where 40,000 young Americans become sailors every year. I had the privilege of serving as the reviewing officer at his boot camp graduation ceremony. More than 3,000 friends and family were inspired by his voice that day and by his fellow 900 shipmates who joined the fleet with him that day. I feel honored for him to sing at my retirement, and I know our Navy is in great hands when I think about the incredible young Americans joining our Navy team each week. Yes, Mr. Secretary, I'm following your orders that each one of us is a recruiter. I also want to thank Commander Brian Davis, because he's the one who had that thankless collateral duty coordinating today's ceremony from beginning to end. While he allegedly volunteered for the job, it was probably more voluntold. His calm, perseverance, and attention to detail have been impressive. In addition, I will publicly recognize an unsung hero of so many retirement and change of office ceremonies each year, Miss Diane Del Coco whose patience, professionalism, and kindness knows no bounds. Thank you both. I wish to acknowledge two fellow sailors who've been mentors to me, both mentoring up. First, our master of ceremonies, Captain Mark Klein, who's actually on terminal leave. It's a good thing that I too am retiring, as it's hard for me to imagine a JAG Corps without Mark Klein as one of its leaders. And second, Master Chief Legalman Lordy Powell, my senior enlisted advisor and the energetic, committed, and compassionate enlisted leader of our JAG Corps. My appreciation also to the eight side boys serving today, all of whom served on my personal staff or were close colleagues. I owe a special thanks to Lieutenant Commanders Misa Sharfin and Simon Chun and Legalman Chief Victoria Augusto Silva for flying across the country or the Atlantic for this occasion. And to Lieutenant Sharon Uti, who has brilliantly endured this last year as my flag aide. Thank you too to the phenomenal Navy band, such a talented and hardworking team. They make every event special as does the Navy's ceremonial guard. 
I'll tell you, for six years, we've lived across the street from the Navy band and where they practice. And we've had a lot of people come up to us and say, don't those buses bother you every morning when they're lined up in front of your house? Honestly, they've never bothered us once. Whether it's 10 o'clock at night or 0600 in the morning, they are the hardest working group always out there telling our Navy story. And I really appreciate having you here today. All right. And then there are the many other stars of today's events, the ushers, the escorts, the proffers, the assorted helpers, each pitching in to support a shipmate going ashore. A special shout out to Patty Babb, Natalie Morehouse, and Captain Mike Lane. Thank you all, and please join me in a round of applause for everyone. Finally, I want to thank Lieutenant Commander Kelly Anderson, who will read the watch later in the ceremony. I specifically asked Kelly to represent the hundreds of judge advocates and legal men who've stood the watch over my six-year tenure, tenure as the JAG and Deputy JAG. Kelly is the command judge advocate on board the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, providing legal advice to the leaders and crew of one of our nation's aircraft carriers recently returned from a nine-month deployment to the Middle East. As I look out on this audience, it's hard to believe my 40-year career is ending. I'm fortunate to have, have so many people here to help us celebrate. I realize that I should pick up the pace because if the ceremony goes too long, my sons have threatened to stand up and start tossing cold beers to folks in the crowd. And knowing them, they just might do it. I want to highlight three things today. The importance of our people, the Navy team, the value of our mission, defending the nation, and that our Navy's future is bright. First, the importance of our people. We have an unbelievable Navy in this country. You've already heard me talk about some of the teams I've had the privilege to be a part of. Now let me highlight a few of the incredible mentors who shaped me. Beginning on the USS Lockwood, as a new surface warfare officer, I learned the importance of second chances from my first commanding officer in the Navy, then Commander Warren Hudson. He showed me how leaders inspire teams, set and maintain high standards, and truly care for sailors and their families. Later on the independence as the judge and a department head, I worked for another phenomenal leader, Captain Hardy Kircher, the Indies executive officer, the number two in command, who was similarly unrelenting in standards, but matched that with unrelenting compassion. While Warren Hudson couldn't be here today, I'm proud Hardy Kircher joins us this morning. Impactful joint leaders helped me grow too, like General Joe Dunford, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who was my boss for three years when I was a new flag officer. Over my career, he has probably been the busiest person in the most stressful job for whom I have ever worked. The senior most uniformed member of the military, directly advising the President and the Secretary of Defense during armed conflict, at the time in both Syria and Afghanistan. He taught me that you're never too busy to make time for people. On his first day as chairman, as we came into his office for the morning meeting, he looked each of us in the eye, shook our hands, asked us a little something about ourselves, and started to get to know us from that moment. He also taught me the importance of preparation. As chairman, he worked tirelessly to be ready doing his homework with the team in advance so he could give his very best when testifying on Capitol Hill or during meetings with the President's Cabinet on the toughest issues facing the country. General Dunford, thank you for being here. There are also many influential JAG Corps leaders who helped me develop over the years. I think of Rear Admiral retired Mike Quinn, who was my instructor at the Naval Justice School, later a colleague at OJAG headquarters, and ended his illustrious career as the Assistant Judge Advocate General for Civil Law, 
when I was the special counsel to the CNO. During that tour, I called on Mike for advice a lot. He's patient, calm, thoughtful, and always cares about people. There's Vice Admiral Nan Dorenzi here today who showed me that line officers didn't have the corner on setting and maintaining high standards or caring about their people. Nan was the model for my tenure as JAG, especially the time she took assigning each officer to new billets and professionally growing the JAG Corps team. I tried to emulate her boundless energy and her ability to always encourage each member of our community, no matter how big the challenge faced. But it's the deck plate sailors and civilians who make up America's warfighting Navy, who give their all to the mission every day. The sailors in third division on the Lockwood and those in the legal department on Indy, the civilians in our legal assistance offices around the globe, the young JAGs serving as prosecutors, defense counsel, and victims legal counsel, the independent duty legal men serving at sea or in remote locations, and the mid-level JAGs advising commanders underway around the world. They make our Navy work. I shall miss their passion, commitment, and yes, at times, their irreverence. The people of our Navy accomplished so much together as a team, it's truly eye-watering. Second, the value of our mission. The JAG Corps mission is to provide full-spectrum legal services to enable naval and joint operations in support of our national security. I've been honored to lead that charge, to meet that mission every day for the last six years. And together, we've conquered unbelievable challenges in support of the Navy. When the Secretary of the Navy ordered a comprehensive external review of the JAG Corps in 2019, the team responded with the right attitude. The men and women of the JAG Corps embraced the red and took the 51 recommendations to heart working hard and creating a better legal team for our Navy. In 2020, we also helped Navy leaders navigate the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic. This included developing new policies and guidance and helping the Navy and Department of Justice address complex litigation. And just as we were coming out of the pandemic and implementing the comprehensive review recommendations, two more unplanned yet monumental changes came our way. And again, the JAG Corps answered the call. In August of 2022, Congress enacted the Camp Lejeune Justice Act, empowering any person who was on board Camp Lejeune from the mid-1950s to the mid-1980s to file a claim for compensation for medical conditions related to contaminating drinking water found there at the time. Our JAG Corps took on this enormous task in taking and processing more than 300,000 claims when we normally handle about 2,000 claims per year. I salute the men and women of the JAG Corps who tackled this challenge to ensure the many claims submitted by service members, their families, and civilians are adjudicated fairly and efficiently. In December of 2021, Congress enacted the Fiscal Year 22 National Defense Authorization Act and gave the services two years until this past December to implement the most significant changes to the military justice system in decades. As you've heard among these many important reforms, this legislation required each service to stand up a new entity, the Office of the Special Trial Council, reporting directly to the secretary, and then to educate commanders on their new roles and sailors on the new system. All of this was accomplished by December of 2023 due to the planning, hard work, and follow through of so many JAG Corps members across our global team. Some thought it couldn't be done, but the team was all in and you did it. And over the last eight months, initial signs are indicating that the new system is already strengthening trust across our Navy's justice system. Finally, I know that the future of our Navy is bright. 
especially when I look at the people of our Navy and how they accomplish the mission, no matter how tough. While the challenges are real, we are heading in the right direction. And the JAG Corps will continue to do so with leaders, such as Leah Reynolds, assuming the mantle as DJAG, and Chris French, taking the helm as the 46th Judge Advocate General of the Navy. I've known Chris since we first served together at US Naval Forces Europe in 2001, and he's relieved me several times before. He brings passion and focus to everything he does, and he's done it all, at sea, overseas, and here in DC. He's committed to the fleet and the warfighter, having deployed to the Middle East and serving at sea three times as the discipline officer on board USS Nimitz, as the staff judge advocate for Commander Carrier Strike Group 5, forward deployed in Yokosuka, Japan, and again in Japan as the 7th Fleet JAG, critically serving during Operation Tomodachi in the wake of the Fukushima nuclear accident. He also deployed during Operation Iraqi Freedom as the Chief of Operational Law for Multinational Forces Iraq. He served with me at U.S. Naval Forces Europe in London, England, as a commanding officer of Region Legal Service Office Europe, Africa, and Southwest Asia in Naples, Italy, and in an important joint tour as the staff judge advocate for the commander of U.S. European Command in Stuttgart, Germany. Here in Washington, he's had the toughest jobs as special counsel to the CNO, Deputy Legal Advisor to the National Security Council and Legal Counsel to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, advising both Generals Dunford and Milley at a pivotal time in our nation's history. And he's been the Deputy JAG for the last three years, taking the job to the next level, ensuring that our now 2,700 member JAG Corps team is fully resourced, properly trained, and well equipped to meet the mission. He's made the case for increased funding and manning, both for uniformed and civilian personnel to meet the JAG Corps mission. He successfully moved Naval Justice School directly under the JAG for better oversight and focus, and was the leading proponent for standing up our newest assistant JAG position for education, training, and professional development. Chris has added tremendous value to our leadership team in part because he and I do not think alike, which leads to better decision-making. He's innovative, energetic, and always ready with thought-provoking questions. So we get the best solutions and solve the right problems. Together, Vice Admiral French, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And Rear Admiral Leah Reynolds are the perfect leadership team to move the JAG Corps forward in these complex times. They care about our sailors and civilians. They care about the fleet and the warfighter. And they care about the mission of our Navy to preserve the peace, respond in crisis, and win decisively in war if necessary. Chris, congratulations to you, Katie and Andy, and Stacy. I couldn't be more excited for you, our JAG Corps, and our Navy. Mr. Secretary, CNO, men and women of the JAG Corps, you couldn't be in better hands. All right, we've come to the hardest part of my remarks, acknowledging my family for all they've done to support me over the last 40 years. Honestly, it's tough to put into words how much they've done and how much I appreciate it, but I'm gonna give it a try. First, thanks to my extended family, Barb's mom and dad, Lucille and Bill Puckett. While they both passed, they are here in spirit. I couldn't have asked for better in-laws. They were all in with our crazy Navy lifestyle as we moved across the globe every few years. Bill, having served in World War II as an enlisted CB, understood the value of service and gave my career choice even more respect than it was due. And Lucy, who personified Southern hospitality, always pampering me. The boys spent many summers with them, so many that our boys felt their second home really is Toledo, Ohio. Sorry guys, that means you all ended up being Detroit sports fans. 
And then there's my brother-in-law, Richard, and my sister-in-law, Nancy, always supportive and there for us. Whether it was Rich supplying us with our favorite Wixy Bakery cakes, or Nancy watching William while Barb studied for the bar exam. Then there was that time that Nancy helped Barb pack out in England and drove with Barb and the boys to Naples, Italy, because of course I wasn't there. They had a little short detour driving around Paris, the Beltway or the Orbital, more than once before they made it to Naples. But you did it, and we couldn't have done any of this without you. And my sister Amy, who's also been on a Navy journey with her family, understanding our challenges and sharing our fun, and sometimes sharing bunk space during our moves along the way. I think I've got something for both Amy and Nancy. Thank you. And then there are my parents, Dars and Ruth Ann, who instilled the travel bug in me from an early age, but more importantly, the value of service. They taught me to give my all, whatever I do, and maybe most importantly, to always care about others. Thanks for your spirit of adventure, your patriotism, your stick to and your boundless support. I love you both. I think I've got something for mom too. <laughs> to the boys, I couldn't ask for three better sons. Despite all the schools, houses, moving and sports teams, thank you for hanging in there. Always being flexible, okay almost always. I mean, there was that time in Rome, I mean, we were in Rome, when you mutinied, threw yourselves on the ground, literally threw themselves on the ground and refused to go into another cathedral. <laughs> Most importantly, thanks for turning out to be such great young men, hardworking, compassionate, independent, and yes, off the payroll. Seriously, I'm proud of you, and I love you. And then there's Barb. I couldn't ask for a better life partner, best friend, and confidant. She truly is my better half, always giving. To me, to the boys, our extended family and friend, others, always giving. After 40 years, I think it's her turn to receive. So we're off to Hawaii, on the 30th of November, with one-way tickets, no return date yet. We've never been stationed there, so it'll be a new adventure for both of us. We'll relax, decompress, play some gin runny, maybe drink a little gin, and then at some point, maybe in February or March, we'll start to figure out what we're gonna do with the rest of our lives. Barb, I couldn't have pursued a career of service all these years without you at my side. Your faith, encouragement, and support. I love you and can't wait to hang out with you on the beach in Hawaii. Please. So there you have it, 40 years in the Navy, well lived. Great people, a worthwhile mission, and an incredibly bright future ahead. I have no regrets. Rather, it's been the honor of a lifetime to serve my nation, the Navy, and the men and women of the JAG Corps. And there's been a bonus along the way, having my family along for the greatest ride ever. Thanks again for coming today. Please join us for the reception to follow and at Solace Outlook tonight. Aloha.
Thank you. I am now ready to read my orders. Guest attention to orders. From Chief of Naval Operations to Judge Advocate General, CNO Order 1064, subject, Retirement Orders for Vice Admiral Darce E. Crandall, Jr., JAG Corps, United States Navy. Your request to be transferred to the retired list has been approved by the Secretary of Defense. Relieved in September 2024 from duty as Judge Advocate General of the Navy. Relieved of all active duty, effective 2359, 31 October 2024. Captain Klein, haul down my flag. Aye, sir. Haul down Vice Admiral Crandall's flag. Please be seated. Vice Admiral Crandall will now be presented with his personal flag by Legal and Master Chief Lordy Powell. In honor of Vice Admiral Crandall's 40 years of service, this flag was form flown on board USS Benfold in Yokosuka, Japan, on board USS Midway, and at the Pentagon. Vice Admiral Crandall began his naval career as a surface warfare officer on board USS Lockwood, homeported in Yokosuka. His son Andrew, following in his footsteps, began his five-year naval career on board the USS Benfold, also homeported in Yokosuka. While Vice Admiral Crandall served on board the USS Lockwood, the ship was a proud member of the Midway Battle Group. Finally, Vice Admiral Crandall spent many years of his naval career in the Pentagon, including as counsel to the Chief of Naval Operations, counsel to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Deputy Judge Advocate General, and of course, as the 45th Judge Advocate General of the Navy. Thank you, Master Chief Powell. Captain Peter Kobler and Colonel D.J. Riley will now present Admiral Crandall with a Navy shadow box on behalf of the wardroom commemorating Admiral Crandall's 40 years of naval service. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Christopher French will now assume the office of the Judge Advocate General of the Navy. I will now read my orders. Attention to orders. From the Chief of Naval Operations to the Judge Advocate, to Navy Judge Advocate General, 
CNO Order 2064, subject, Administrative Orders for Vice Admiral Christopher C. French, JAG Corps, United States Navy. When directed by reporting senior, detach in September of 2024 from duty as the Deputy Judge Advocate General, report no later than September 2024 for duty as Judge Advocate General of the Navy. Captain Klein, break my flag. Aye, sir. Break Vice Admiral French's flag. Yes, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Christopher C. French, United States Navy, Judge Advocate General of the Navy. Mr. Secretary, I'm going to keep uh, one of the best traditions of the Navy. A good XO makes a short speech. <laughs> All right, good morning. Welcome, distinguished guests, family, friends. Uh, here with us today, and also to all the people who are joining in online. I'd like to thank you, SECNAV and CNO, for being here with us this morning, and more importantly, for your outstanding leadership and care for the U.S. Navy and each and every sailor that makes up our great Navy. I'd just like to extend a thank you uh, to all the people who've made this uh, day uh, such a successful day. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into it, and so from all of us, Please uh, accept my thanks for this. All right, to Admiral Crandall, my dear friend, for 23 years, words cannot begin to express my mixed emotions as we share this stage here today. I am, of course, excited and honored to congratulate you on an outstanding 40-year career of service to our nation. But I have to be honest, I'm also saddened to know that our time working together has come to an end. I take this opportunity one final time to say thank you for your friendship, your mentorship, your leadership all these years. I will miss serving with you. To Barb and the boys, I also say congratulations and thank you. The Crandalls set the standard 
for caring. Whether welcoming me, Katie and Andy, to London on our first overseas tour, or hosting myriad of Navy events, you always made everyone feel at home and cared for and made sure there was never anyone alone on our holidays and special events. The only comfort I take in your retirement is knowing that our friendship will endure and knowing that you will always be there for me when I need help. I would also like to recognize those that have supported me throughout the years, from the early days in Hawaii, through the deployments, the overseas tours, time in the Pentagon, to each and every one of you a sincere thank you from my heart. To my friends, thank you for the love, help, and support. A Navy career is not possible without good friends. To Stacy's family, thank you for welcoming me into your family. To Stacy, thank you for your love and support. You make me a better person, and I look forward to our future together. I love you. To my family, my mother and father who can't be with us here today, they're tuning in from Connecticut. So uh, hi to Nancy and Peter, mom and dad, uh, and also my sister Debbie. Thank you uh, for supporting me throughout my life. To my parents, uh, you made me the man I am today and without your love and support all these years, I would not be here uh, today. To my brother Andy and my sister Debbie, Thank you for being my best friend from the very beginning. Thank you to both of your families for all the love and all the laughs over the years. And finally, to Katie and Andy. You guys are my rock. I'm so proud of you. I love you. To the JAG Corps. At this ceremony three years ago, I said, in the days to come, we will together build on the hard work of our predecessors. Well, we did, but we're not done yet. We got more work to do. The Navy JAG Corps, officer, enlisted, civilian, active, and reserve is stronger today than it was yesterday and will be stronger tomorrow than it is today. We will rise to every challenge and deliver the legal services that our nation calls for. We will take care of each other because our people are our strength. Our JAG Corps is on the right course and we will stay on it. We will embrace our priorities, war fighting, people, and military justice. In closing, I will ask one thing of you here today. Please join me in a round of applause for the women and the men of the United States Navy, JAG Corps, for their service. Thank you, Vice Admiral French. Lieutenant Commander Kelly Anderson will now read the watch. Lieutenant Commander Anderson is one of those members of the JAG Corps serving on board the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower CVN-69 and embarked on the Mighty Ike with Carrier Strike Group 2. They recently completed a historic nine-month deployment in the U.S. 5th Fleet and U.S. 6th Fleet areas of operations. During this deployment, the Mighty Ike and the Strike Group 2 spent many months in the Red Sea and shot down dozens of missiles fired by Houthi rebels in Yemen that were targeting commercial vessels and U.S. Navy warships in critical shipping lanes. For 40 years, this sailor 
has stood the watch. While some of us were in our bunks at night, this sailor stood the watch. While some of us were in school learning our trade, this shipmate stood the watch. Yes, even before some of us were born into this world, this shipmate stood the watch. In those years, when the storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizon of history, this shipmate stood the watch. Many times, he would cast his eye ashore and see his family standing there, needing his guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times. But he still stood the watch. He stood the watch for 40 years. He stood the watch so that we, our families, and our fellow countrymen could sleep soundly in safety each and every night, knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today, we are here to say, shipmate, the watch stands relieved, relieved by those you have trained guided and led. Guests, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the conclusion of the ceremony and the departure of Vice Admiral Crandall and his family. Let us pray. Great is your faithfulness, Eternal Father, that has brought Vice Admiral Del Crandall to this moment of celebration and transition. We pray then your mercies upon him as he reflects on the path on which you have led him and the multitude of experiences and challenges you've set before him. Grant Vice Admiral Crandall and his dear family a clear sense that even as you've provided for them in every assignment and abided with them at every station, so now you promise to cheer them and guide them, granting them each a great hope for tomorrow. You have ordered Vice Admiral Crandall's steps and directed his illustrial path in naval service thus far. Continue to lead him in his service to you. Amen. Bozen, post the side boys. This order has been passed on naval ships from the 1500s to today. Spanish, French, English, and Dutch. Yes, every, na every Navy in the world has used the boatswain's call and side boys to bring aboard or send ashore its officers, visiting officers, and all visiting dignitaries. Today, our Navy has given most of the pomp and circumstance, honors, traditions, and ceremonies back to history. Time does not give us the freedom to do these things from the past. Nevertheless, today we will stop all engines, lay about smartly, and drop anchor, we honor the years served, the guidance, the leadership, the friendship, and the expertise that this shipmate has freely given for the past 40 years. Following the time-honored naval tradition, Vice Admiral Crandall will now request permission from Admiral Franchetti to go ashore for the final time. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, retired, and family departing.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. You are cordially invited to a reception at the north end of Lutz Park, where cake will be cut immediately with the Crandall family sword. Admiral, this concludes today's ceremony.